frequency division multiplexing uh, now uh, actually this is nothing but the one of the advantage of modulation as we have seen in the uh, need of modulation that uh, it reduces the height of antenna similarly the modulation is used in case of multiplexing because uh, when we uh, have more than one signal suppose uh, we have uh, three message signals okay and three speech signals actually and uh, if all the three signals are having same frequency range because uh, if we are talking about the speech signal then this speech signal will have range from 300 hertz to 3400 hertz because we, uh, we know that the range of the speech signal or the voice signal is lies in this particular range. So, if there are three person and all are having the same frequency range, but because the persons are different, it may have the spectrum different. But if you want to transmit this via channel which has only a single line, a single channel is available, then we have to add these three signals and we have to transmit via channel. Because we have three persons, we have one channel, we want to transmit these three signals via one channel. So, for that we required only one signal and for that one signal we have to add all the three signals and because all the three message signals are speech signals, they will lie in the same range, but the spectrum may be different because their persons are different. You can consider this in this way. Suppose this is the first person and having the spectrum in this range, suppose 0 to 3400, let us say for time being and this is another person and having the spectrum in the same range because the speech signal, this is first person, this is second person and there is a some third person and it may have the frequency range from 0 to 3400 but the shape is like this because all the person is having different speech characteristics and the different voice. So, that is why the spectrum we are showing is different, but the range will be same. Now, if we want to transmit it by single channel, this is the channel, then we have to add these three signals. These three signals should be added together. this should be added here, right. Now, when we add, we will get some random signal, when we add this all signal will overlap in this range and we will get some characteristics. We do not know after adding graphically, uh, if we add it by MATLAB or some software, then we can get the exact result, but this signal will overlap with each other. And at the receiver, we want to separate these signals, we want first person here, the signal of second person here and the signal from third person here. Then in this case, uh, we have to place some filter or we have to recover our message signal from this signal, but after adding, we will get suppose the spectrum like this, suppose any random signal we are getting in this way and if the spectrum is in this way, then how can we find this signal? From this signal, it is difficult to recover this signal, it is difficult to recover this signal and this signal. We cannot separate these three signals from this combined signal. So, for that what we have to do, we have to shift it to other frequency. We have to keep this three spectrum separate in the transmitter side itself because in the transmitter if we directly add and pass it through the channel, the signals are combined and we get the signal uh, in of any shape and from that shape it is very much difficult to recover our original message back. So, here the uh, advantage of modulation comes into the picture that if we assign different carrier frequency to all the message signals, then all the message signal spectrum will shift to some other frequency and the spectrum will be separated. If I multiply it by 
frequency f1 after, uh, multiplied by f2 and f3 then it will shift to f1 it will shift to f2 and f3 and all these three signals are combined and these sig signals are combined and then it is transmitted via channel then these three signals are separated already because they are shifted to other frequencies or different frequency that's why the spectrum will be shifted suppose this is the spectrum you multiply it by a frequency f1 then this spectrum will shift to some frequency f1 here this will be lower side band whatever will be the upper side uh, positive frequency and there will be negative frequency as well mirror image so this zero will shift to f1 so here zero will be shift to f1 and here we get f1 plus 3400 and f1 minus 3400 similarly if you consider this as a spectrum that is 3400 of message signal then there will be a mirror image that is minus 3400 and if i multiply it by frequency f2 then it will shift to some other frequency f2 and let us say this f2 is higher than f1 so here we will get some frequency some component here f2 plus 3400 and f2 minus 3400 and if i add these two signals we will get the resultant signal somewhere here if i add suppose i will get somewhere here there is a signal f2 and there is a signal f1 and at the receiver because this second person spectrum and the first message signal is different we can place a filter here and we can place a separate filter here and this message signals can be separated at the receiver so in this way we can multiplex the message signals with the help of modulation so this is nothing but frequency division multiplexing because we are dividing overall bandwidth of channel because when we uh, have a channel that means it will be having some particular bandwidth and in that bandwidth i am using this particular signal and this particular signal so the channel will be having this much bandwidth from f1 minus 3400 to f2 plus 3400 this much be, uh, this will be the bandwidth of channel so the overall bandwidth of channel is divided into two parts first one is assigned for the message signal 1 and second part is assigned to second person so it means that the bandwidth of the channel is divided and that's why its name is frequency division multiplexing because the frequency of the channel is divided into number of user so number of user are two then the bandwidth can be divided into two parts and the frequency is dividing that's why it is known as frequency division multiplexing and whatever will be the bandwidth assigned to the first person that person can use that bandwidth for infinite time or for long time for long time he can use that particular bandwidth because the bandwidth is fixed for that particular message signal or that particular channel but overall uh, the bandwidth is limited the you cannot use complete bandwidth of the channel you have to use some section of bandwidth of channel and other portion will be used by other user so let's see what will be the block diagram of the frequency division multiplexing because we are talking about the speech signal the speech signal can be used efficiently in ssb modulation and that too by filter method we know that the ssb signal is having more advantage than other type of modulation because the ssb is having only one sideband so the power requirement is less the bandwidth requirement is less so that's why we want to use ssb but uh, we also know that in case of ssb we should have 
a very complex circuit if we use phase shift method and uh, because of uh, uh, in a uh, speed signal when we talk about the speed signal there is another method that can be used and uh, that will generate ssb very easily and that is nothing but filter method because in case of filter method uh, if the sp signal is used there is a, a big gap or the sufficient gap between the upper sideband and lower sideband and any of the sideband can be easily separated so that's why here we are going to use filter method that is very easy to generate ssb signal balanced modulator so with the help of balanced modulator we use double sideband signal here should be our message signal first message signal because we are using a filter method so this will be a band pass filter and this output is combined with another signal let us say we have second balance modulator and output of this is also passed through the band pass filter and it is combined so as we discussed earlier that all the message signal should be shifted to other frequency separate frequency different frequency it means that if we want to shift m1 t2 frequency f1 the input of this balance modulator should be cos 2 pi f1 t a cosine signal should have frequency f1 so similarly we have n number of signals or n number of users and we have to assign different frequency to all the end users so here i am assigning or giving input cos 2 pi f1 t or simply i can write f1 also here we are giving input cos 2 pi f2 t and cos 2 pi f n t now this will also pass through the band pass filter to get the single sideband signal and these signals are combined these signals are combined here and this signal combined signal is passed through channel because we have one channel and number of user that's why it is called multiplexing many to one many to one is called multiplexing and one to many is called demultiplexing so we are multiplexing the signal we are combining this n number of signals into one signal and then transmitting it through channel the output of this channel which is input to the receiver and because in the ssb modulation single sideband suppressed carrier the recovery can be possible with the help of synchronous detector so we will place synchronous detector here here we can put band pass filter just to uh, ensure that the only the desired term is passed so that's why we will keep a band pass filter here so that only the desired term can pass through it here also we have a band pass filter
and similarly we have n number of users so we have to use n number of band pass filters this is first band pass filter second band pass filter and nth this band pass filter should be having center frequency at f1 this should be center frequency at f2 and this should be center frequency at fn so that only the spectrum which is center about f1 will pass through this band pass filter and other components will be suppressed and this output of this band pass filter is passed through balanced modulator because now we have to recover the message signal because when you multiply any message signal spectrum suppose for example i am showing here if you are considering a message signal having frequency f1 or fm and when you multiply it by cos 2 pi f1 then it will shift to f1 and f1 plus fm and f1 minus fm and if you can pass only this upper side band then you will get this type of signal and only to pass this spectrum you require a band pass filter because there may be another signal which will be here and this combined signal will be input to the receiver so this combined signal this combined signal having two frequency component will be input to this band pass filter will be input to this band pass filter and so on so you have to take only the uh, uh, only the component which is center about f1 so because we in the upper path we want the signal which is ranging from f1 to f1 plus f1 fm and this is f2 and f2 plus fm so we want to suppress this term and we want to select this term and that's why at the receiver we have to keep a band pass filter around f1 because it can pass through that particular uh, it will pass only the frequency component which is ranging about f1 now the balance modulator we have to keep synchronized so for this we have to take the frequency f1 now we will be having another balanced modulator and this balanced modulator will also be having another input which is we should be synchronized with the transmitter side and this is cos 2 pi f2t and similarly here also we will be having a balanced modulator and it is having cos 2 pi f n t now after balance modulator we will be having a low pass filter because we want to recover our low frequency signal which is a message signal so we will use low pass filter which should be center around f1 here we will be having low pass filter which is having cut off frequency f2 then we will get m1t sorry uh, this is not f1 this should be message signal frequency fm1 suppose because all are having speech signal so the range you can write fm only so this is the block diagram of frequency division multiplexing this is the transmitter part the message all the message signals are having frequency fm 
because all are sp signals so they are having the same frequency range and this same frequency range cannot be recovered at the receiver that's why we are modulating it and modulate after modulation this carrier the spectrum will shift to f1 f2 and so on up to fn then with the help of bandpass filter we get the ssb signal and these all ssb signals are combined here and this combined signal are transmitted through this channel and output of this channel is passed through the input of this bandpass filter and because this bandpass filter is center around f1 and this is f2 and this is fn so it will pass the frequency component which is center around f1 so uh, you will get the original signal uh, center around f1 and when you multiply it by f1 you will get a high frequency term that is 2f1 and the low frequency term which is your message signal and to recover that message signal this is a low pass filter is used and uh, we if we are assuming that all the message signal are having frequency fm then the cut off frequency of the low pass filter should be fm and after this you will get your original message signal back Now here uh, we can also consider the bandwidth suppose uh, we can consider how can you calculate the bandwidth of this channel so in case of frequency division multiplexing for example Suppose we are having a message signal like this we are multiplying it with cos 2 pi f 1 t and we are having another message signal like this. this is first message signal this is second message signal and this is multiplied with another carrier cos 2 pi f 2 t this is m 1 t this is m 2 t now you have to because there are uh, more than one signal so you have to frequency division multiply this or combine it with single channel and pass it to the single channel. So, when we combine these two spectrum here this spectrum will shift to f 1 this is f 1 this is f 1 plus f m and this is f 1 minus f m. So, you can say the bandwidth of this is 2 fm or in fact uh, okay let us see uh, we are not assuming here the single sideband only double sideband ok. So, this is the double sideband signal and here we will get again the spectrum which will be center about f 2 and f 2 plus f m and f 2 minus f m here this is also double sideband signal. Now, we are combining these two signals. So, after combining we get a spectrum like this we are assuming that f 2 is greater than f 1. So, here we were getting f 2 here we are getting f 1 and this is this is also having the bandwidth 2 f m. So, this will occupy the bandwidth 2 f m and this will also occupy the bandwidth 2 f m. So, now if we want to transmit it through channel, so what should be the bandwidth of the channel because this signal should be passed through channel this after combining these two whatever will be the resultant signal suppose s of t this s of t will be passing through the 
channel. So what should be the bandwidth of the channel? So if you find the bandwidth from this particular spectrum, uh, we calculate the bandwidth from the lowest frequency component to highest frequency component. That means uh, we should know this frequency component and this frequency and then we will take the difference between these two. But we know this width and this width, this width is 2 fm, this width is 2 fm, that means 2 fm plus 2 fm, 4 fm and this gap, this gap because this gap is also occupying some particular bandwidth and what is the requirement of this gap? The requirement of this gap is because we want to separate this spectrum at the receiver, this spectrum should be separated or it should be having some guard so that it can be easily recovered at the receiver. Because at the receiver when these two combined signal will come, it will pass through the bandpass filter and the bandpass filter response of this practical bandpass filter will be like this. If we talk about the practical bandpass filter, then it should have the spectrum response like this. So it will pass some extra frequency component and if this is the response of the bandpass filter, practical bandpass filter, if I place the bandpass filter, so it will pass this range. It means it will pass this range also. So there should be some gap or there should not be any other component so that this message signal only can be separated. And if I want to use a bandpass here, bandpass filter here, so I have to use in this way so that it will not, this bandpass filter will not pass this particular component. So that is why there should be some gap and this gap is known as guard band. This gap is known as guard band because it is protecting the other component. So that is working as a guard of other, guard for other component and if I want to uh, calculate bandwidth now, then the bandwidth of this FDM channel, frequency division multiplexed signal is 2 fm plus 2 fm, 2 fm plus 2 fm plus guard band, that is 4 fm plus guard band. So in this way you can calculate the bandwidth. So if we talk about the bandwidth of this particular frequency division multiplex signal and if all the having same frequency then you can write bandwidth of this frequency division multiplex signal as n into fm plus n minus 1 into fm. n minus 1 into guard band. This will be the bandwidth of frequency division multiplexed signal. If we consider SSB signal because in that particular diagram we are considering only SSB signal. Here we consider 2 fm because we were considering the double sideband suppressed carrier signal. So if I want to calculate from that formula, so this is the bandwidth of FDM equal to twice of bandwidth of modulation uh, that is the DSBSC plus N minus 1 that is 2 minus 1 into guard band. You will see we will get the same result because bandwidth of DSBSC is 2 fm and num 2 minus 1 is 1 and we get guard band. So we get 4 fm plus guard band that means this result. So from this particular uh, discussion, we can write the bandwidth of FDM in general. If there is an N user and we are using SSBSC modulation, so in case of SSBSC modulation, the bandwidth is FM. So here the SSB signal will be generated. Here we generated the SSBSC signal. So this SSBSC signal will be having bandwidth FM. This is also a SSBSC signal. So this will also be having bandwidth FM. And we are also assuming that all the message signals are having same frequency FM. 
So if all the message signals are having same frequency FM, then the bandwidth of this SSB signal is FM, FM and FM A and that will be come into N times and for the N spectrum we will be having N minus 1 guard band as you can see that if there were two spectrum then there is only one guard band between these two. This is the two spectrum and there is one guard band between these two component. Similarly, if we will be having three components, suppose here also I would have this component, then there is a one guard band and another guard band that is total two guard band. So, if there are three signals, there are two guard bands. If there are two signals, there is one guard band. So, if there are n signals, there will be n minus 1 guard band. So, that is why here n minus 1 into guard band and n times of fm. This will be the bandwidth of this frequency division multiplexed signal. So, this formula can be used to calculate bandwidth of frequency division multiplex signal if all the message signals are having same frequency. If the question is asked that here I am using SSBSA signal, here I am using double sideband signal, here I am using double sideband full carrier signal, then in that particular case you have to consider the bandwidth of this SSB that is FM, this is uh, DSB SC, so this is 2 FM and this is double sideband full carrier, so that is also 2 FM, then you will get 2 FM plus 2 FM plus FM that is total 5 FM plus 3 minus 1 because there were 3 signals. So, 3 minus 1 into whatever the guard band is given in the question. So, if there is different modulation, you have to consider the bandwidth in this way. Like uh, this is the example here I generated double sideband surprise carrier, the bandwidth is 2 fm. Suppose here I have generated double sideband full carrier. So, here also we get the bandwidth 2 fm and there is another signal, third message signal and I am considering it as a single sideband suppressed carrier. So, the bandwidth could have FM. So, 2 FM, 2 FM and there is another signal which is having suppose bandwidth FM. This is having bandwidth FM. So, for this particular diagram, the bandwidth of FDM signal is 2 FM, 2 FM and FM total 5 FM plus 1 guard band, 2 guard band. So, 2 times of guard band. Generally, the frequency of the guard band is always same. So, whatever will be the guard band here, the bandwidth will be same for this two component also. So, the guard band is generally constant throughout the uh, spectrum. So, two times of guard band. So, in this way, we calculate the bandwidth of FDM if there are three signals and all are having different type of modulation. This is suppose double sideband suppressed carrier, this is suppose double sideband full carrier and this is SSBSC, then you will calculate bandwidth in this way. And if according to that diagram, the bandwidth is this way. And in general, the bandwidth is given by this particular expression. If all the message signals are SSB modulated, okay. Now, this is all about the frequency division multiplexing, but practically uh, there are number of times modulation and demodulation happens and let us consider the some practical aspect of this frequency division multiplexing. We will get some standard result that has been already uh, uh, invented by the scientist and that practical value is useful and this type of question is asked in uh, other public sector exams like ES or ISRO or any other exam. So, that will be useful for other exam. Up to gate, this is the sufficient and if you want to see the practical aspect of this, then we can consider practical values of FDM.